Oh, hi. On today's episode, we travel all the way to France, not just for wine and baguettes, but to witness some of the world's most advanced 3D printers. How on earth did my attempt to build a six-story building bring me 6,000 kilometers away from home? If you haven't heard, I'm trying to build a six-story building that would normally take up to $14 million and three years to build. My goal is to try and build this in half the time and half the cost. Here's the catch. I'm trying to do it with twice the quality. The reason behind this ambitious project is the rapid advancements literally everywhere. Look at our electronics, cars, and even the device that you're using to watch this video right now. Yet in construction, we're still relying on methods that are a century old. This is leading to some significant challenges. The housing crisis. Housing crisis. The housing crisis. Demand is here, the supply is here. Nothing will change if we don't change. Therefore, we're traveling the globe to discover technology and methods that can revolutionize the way we build homes, making everything faster, cheaper, and better. Our destination is Construction 3D, a France-based company located in bruyes sur le in the northern part of France. Construction 3D was founded by Antoine Mult, a hands-on engineer who saw 3D printing not just innovative, but practical, scalable, and sustainable, enabling new architectural freedom. His record-setting 14-meter Arthurian-inspired printed castle shows how Antoine's work positions Construction 3D at the forefront of global movement, transforming construction from manual to digital craftsmanship. This is like the coolest shit in the world. Oh, we're filming already? I'm not that type of guy to just talk about coming to France. I got in a plane and I came here and I want to check out Construction 3D's operation firsthand and let you guys see what's really going on out here. Like these statues. You can tell this is 3D printed and it's super cool. And check this out. What they did was they turned some of the other ones into EV chargers. What a cool setup. And I think behind me right there is actually the 3D printing that they printed on YouTube, which I believe is the biggest 3D printed structure in the world. But we're gonna find out. Meeting his team, I realized I may have overlooked brushing up on my French. Fortunately for me, their team not only spoke English, but also shared my passion for science fiction. Well, well, you gotta check this out. It's like full ET. It's printed. You could use this whole castle for our diorama for our battles. Look at this. Look. Oh, no way. Will, it's the report repair joy. I'm in like heaven. This is wild. Okay, okay, okay. Back to 3D printing. Antoine has built this entire compound using 3D printing. I haven't seen anything like it before. The attention to detail is almost psychotic. Pneumatic vacuum elevator. Yeah, this is PVE. Oh my God, check this out. Oh my God, look, they printed themselves. Yes, this is the machine so the thing. First, you're crazy, then you become dangerous, then you become obvious. Now to clarify, Antoine's actually referring to history. We are innovators and disruptors, but every disruptor is first labeled as crazy. We see this all the time, especially in mainstream media. Did you, did you get that? Say that again. When you're an innovator, whatever you say, you're crazy. Crazy. Then you become dangerous because you change the way things are being done. You change the way people are making business. You change the way everything has been made. So the people in place don't like you. Like the Tesla guy. The thing is to try to become obvious as soon as we can, right? So that's why it's good to have media to, to talk about what we're doing. So, so we, we get to the obvious space without staying dangerous too long. Without staying dangerous too long. Do you hear that? That's one of the one of the key elements of why this show exists is because it's construction disruption. Hence, if you are dangerous because you're creating a disruption in the environment in which you are, then you're a threat. However, if we can announce that threat and we can de deter that from being a threat, but a benefit, we can dissuade that and create truth and the ability to advance. Now this table in front of us, it does a great job of breaking down how all revolutions have happened and why they've happened. Antoine broke this down to his perception of exactly how history unfolds technology. Seeing this, 
it made a complete sense to me in what we're doing. In history, our journey begins with the legend of King Arthur. In medieval stories, knights sought after the Holy Grail. To early writers, the Grail was a miraculous cup, sometimes the chalice of the Last Supper, that promised endless nourishment and spiritual enlightenment. The quest wasn't about gold, it was about knowledge and virtue. On this channel, the Grail represents the constant search for wisdom and the courage to chase it. Like those knights, we're seeking a way to build faster, more affordable, and better. To guide our journey, Antoine uses symbolic elements in European lore. Four objects carry deep meanings. The book, the accumulation of knowledge and written science. The sword, action and power to change our world. The elephant, which represents memory, keeping lessons from the past alive. And the grail, an inspiration and the search for something greater. In Chinese philosophy, five elements, wood, fire, metal, and water, describe cycles of nature and creativity. By blending the four Western symbols with the five Eastern elements, Antoine forms nine elements. Each one reminds us that progress comes from mixing thought and action, art and engineering, and history and vision. Leonardo da Vinci embodies that blend. He wasn't just a painter, he was an inventor, an engineer, and an architect. And in 1516, the King of France, King Francis Le Premier, invited Leonardo to France and awarded him a pension and named him first painter, engineer, and architect of the king. Leonardo spent his final years designing machines, forts, and canals in the Loire Valley. Why does this matter to us? Well, because it shows that cross-border collaboration and curiosity fuel innovation. This channel, it crosses disciplines and continents to find the best ideas. Just like Le Roi Francis, we are reaching across the Alps for Leonardo. Now we jump ahead to 1789 and the French Revolution. The upheaval dismantled the old order and closed the king's engineering schools. Now for obvious reasons, that caused an engineering shortage. To solve it, reformers such as Gustave Mont and La Salle Caron founded the École Le Centre de Travaux Public in 1794. Just a year later, it became École Polytechnique, the school that trained France's civil and military engineers, where students studied physics, mathematics, and chemistry so they could actually rebuild their country. The revolution also introduced the metric system in 1799, replacing hundreds of local measurements with decimal systems based on the meter and kilogram. Standardized units helped scientists and engineers collaborate across borders and set the stage for modern technology. The lesson? Revolutions aren't just about politics. They can create the institutions and standards that enable innovation. Vive la révolution! After the revolution, Napoleon sought to symbolize France's power, and in 1808, he ordered a 24-meter tall bronze elephant to be built at the site of La Bastille. Only a full-size plaster model was actually built, but it was enormous. Visitors could climb a staircase inside its leg to reach a platform on its back. Napoleon planned to cast the final version from captured cannons to symbolize his victory. When the fall of Napoleon happened, the project stalled, the plaster elephant decayed and became a shelter for homeless before finally being demolished. The elephant of the Bastille, it's a cautionary tale. Ambition must have substance or it will crumble. The next leg of our journey spans all of the industrial revolutions. Water and steam powered machines, mechanized textile mills, and coal mines. The second revolution was from the mid 9th century to the 20th centuries and spread across Europe, North America, and Japan. And it brought electricity, telegraphs, steel, and mass production. These revolutions raised wealth and created new jobs, but also imposed harsh conditions long hours in factories, and dangerous work for men and women, and even children. The takeaway for us is that technology can liberate, but it can also harm if we ignore social consequences. Our modern disruption must learn from that history. Jumping ahead to 1956, where a converted tanker called Ideal X carried 58 containers from Newark to Houston. That voyage launched the container era, standardized metal boxes, slashed shipping costs, and connected distant markets. Without containers, there would be no global electronics industry. Your phone wouldn't exist. 
Antoine turns this idea on its head. He ships 3D printers and other tools in containers, not for mass consumption, but for communities so that they can produce locally. This is the bridge between global trade and local empowerment. All of these ideas, myth, art, revolution, industry, global trade, AI, converge in Antoine's Citadel de Savoir-Faire. Yeah, that's a 3D printed castle. This scientific discovery park in Northern France gathers companies working on 3D printing, scanning, and blockchain. Inside its walls are machines 3D and construction 3D. Their Tower 1 is the first building in France printed with 3D concrete, and it holds the record for the tallest 3D printed tower. Construction's 3D explicitly states that it aims to unite people thinking ways to live and that 3D printing frees architecture while reducing human energy and financial costs. The Citadel isn't just amassing wealth, it's about sharing knowledge, savoir faire, so communities everywhere can build better homes. In our story, Antoine, he plays the role of Merlin and opens his gates to the Citadel so you, as the knight, can see the future of construction. When we step back, we see a single thread weaving through these stories. King Arthur's Grail Quest teaches us that the search for knowledge never ends. Leonardo da Vinci shows that art and engineering must dance together. The French Revolution and the metric system prove that sociable upheaval can create the schools and standards that make innovations possible. Napoleon's elephant, La Bastille, reminds us that ambition needs solid foundation and the constant search for knowledge is always available. The Industrial Revolution teaches us to balance progress with social responsibility. Containers shrink the world. AI and robotics enlarge our capabilities. And Antoine's Citadel, it shows us how to take these lessons and turn them into reality. Construction disruption isn't just documenting this history. We're part of it. We champion technologies that make construction faster, better, and more affordable. Not for power or profit, but to improve human life. Our elephant still points forward. Before tomorrow arrives, we still have a vast expanse of things to cover today. No, no, hurry, because they've just started, okay? Construction's 3D tests their products here, and I have the opportunity to meet with their team of engineers and scientists. I learned how a machine like the Maxi Printer can be used to build my six-story apartment. This is less than one hour. In less than one hour with the same mixture. Damn. This is a revolution. This is crazy. It's incredible how much height can be printed in just one hour. Okay, now we have a live print of a regular wall section. The purpose of this print is not to make crazy design, it's to see the repeatability and the dimension and the thickness of the layer and the action of the wind on the printing. Because it's easy to print inside, but when we print outside, the water curing is a key point. And if you have much wind, like in north of France, you need to have a formula that doesn't crack when there is wind. It's key to keep the water inside the mixture so it doesn't crack. This is what we want. We want to optimize buildings so we have the lowest emission, the lowest cost, the lowest weight, but still the best strength as possible. Like termites, like uh, bees, they make honeycomb wall, they make uh, structures that are uh, optimized, and that's what we should copy. We should print like nature for life to pursue. On imprime comme la nature pour que la vie perdure. When we build like nature, we print the future. Now we're going to be walking into where the manufacturing of the maxi printers actually happen. Fun fact, they can actually produce one maxi printer a week. So that means the distribution can be worldwide now. So this small thing is a maxi printer. Okay. It's folded. When it unfolds, you get the big machine of oh, cool. 18 meter radius, nine meter radius, 18 meter diameter. Okay. So this machine looks small, can fit in a container, but is expandable. What's the width? The width of the machine here can go through a door of 90 centimeters. So 36 inches. 36 inches. Right? So it's a commercial door. Commercial. So this could literally fit into a commercial door. It can door. go out through this small door. Applications of this could be used versatile, including potentially even data centers. 
Yes, we have customer printing data center right now. The moment you put this outside of the container that yeah. comes together, you need 15 minutes with two trained people to deploy and start printing. Give me the reasons why I would want to, why I would want this machine. Because this machine is part of the third industrial revolution and it's bringing faster, smarter, more efficient buildings to life, to completion when we don't have enough labor. So this is a, a key uh, asset to understand to bring your country forward in the, in the construction. We have finished this Mini Printer Pro, Mini Printer Pro XL. So this one is going to Canada, right? This one is doing Quebec. Quebec? Yeah, yeah. Those green ones are the one for Dubai. So oh, see? the green ones are for yeah, Dubai. Yeah. And they get their own color. Yes, this is our partner for the MENA region, oh, 3DXB. That, that's cool. You can put your name on them? Yeah. For Dubai, their airport code is DXB. So 3DXB was a good joke to make. Antoine isn't just an expert in concrete printing. He's also spent years working with traditional 3D printing. He even has a 3D printing lab where he develops parts and prototypes. This led him to printing his own castle. Yeah, you heard me right. He printed his own castle. Standing over 14 meters tall with three floors and over 500 square meters of space, it's the tallest 3D printed building in the world. From Is this Belgium over here? Yeah. And it was constructed in just 225 hours. This building sets the example of what the future could be. Oh, hi! Sorry, I'm in the hot tub on the world's tallest 3D printed building. Don't mind me as I hang out in here in this wicked 3D printed structure using the mini printer, which did the encasement of the walls, and the maxi printer on the exterior, showcasing you can use a dichotomic approach to building. Now, I could turn this on, but I'll get soaked at the moment. But <laughs> this is pretty cool, guys. Antoine is now working on adding a school to the compound to train people in the trade on how to use this technology and have them ready for the next revolution of building. We said we weren't here for the baguettes, but the day ended with me and Antoine and some wine discussing the future of me using this technology to move Canada's construction forward. So Antoine, so you know I'm building a six-story building in Toronto. That's my goal. This is something that's going to change the world. This is something that's going to change how things are done. And I, I want to be part of that. What is your, what's your idea like on how this gets bigger? What's your idea on how you take what you're doing here and revolutionizing everything from a global spectrum? Well, Chris, the opportunity of my lifetime is to bring a solution of mass construction for the world. And you're more than welcome to help us push it forward in the whole Canada and further if you can. We need one million of those maxi printers to just stop the number of people who have no home. So one million machine, you start with one, then two, then four, then eight, and then in 30 years from now, we'll look backward and we'll have print a lot of communities. And hopefully it will be green, it will be cheaper, it will be more efficient for the people. And if we can get, get out of this revolution, the, the satisfaction of giving a home for every homeless kid, that's my main goal. And I guess from what you share with me is also yours now. Everything we've looked at so far has led me to think that 3D printing is the route to go. I think that I'm going to buy one of these. Like a kid in a candy Stay store Stay tuned, because right on the next episode, we go shopping. And you're not going to want to miss this. Like always, hammer that subscribe button, and we'll see you on the next episode.